Welcome everyone. We'll give you about a minute to come in. Feel free to introduce yourself in chat. We love to get to know everyone. Um, how you're feeling, how comfortable are you with this subject? Just to kind of gauge where you're at and we'll get started in about a minute. All right, well, I will get started. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, again, you can use the chat to introduce yourself. We also have a QA feature. So if you wanna ask a specific question, you can put it there. You can ask anonymous, anonymously if you don't wanna put your name with it. Um, and so welcome to our coach chat about supporting women in, in esports. We have some special guests. I'm so excited to have everyone. I'm Melanie. I'm part of the community team. We are going to be discussing how you all can support girls and women in your programs. It's going to be kind of a mashup between a panel and then slides with some practical um, steps that you can take with your program if you don't have anything. Um, so today we are joined by Sierra Yeto. Sierra is a freshman at HVCC studying computer information systems. She is the first captain ever on the Overwatch team during the inaugural season and participated on the Valorant team last semester. She transferred from Xbox by building her own PC to be able to participate in esports. She likes games like it, to play games in her downtime besides Overwatch and Valorant are Call of Duty, Cold War, Minecraft, and Balloons TD6. Welcome, Sierra. Thank you for joining us. We also have Michelle Frazier. Michelle is a speech pathologist, speech language pathologist. Oh my goodness, I can't read today. I'm so sorry. An assistive technology coordinator for Rotterdam Mohanesen School District in New York's capital region. Michelle started coaching her school's esports team in fall of 2020. It was an ex exciting finish last season with the Smite Warriors finishing third overall and the Rocket League State Warriors Warriors placing fourth in New York State. Michelle has spent 22 years playing ice hockey, both co-ed and women's, and sees many parallels between the involvement of women in esports and ice hockey. This is what initially inspired her to network and coordinate to get more girls involved in esports with her district. Michelle is excited to, for spring 2021 season and to continue to grow Mohanesen's program for the current players and players to come. Thanks for joining us, Michelle. And we have Laura Byrne. Laura teaches physics at Brighton High School in Rochester, New York. She is an astrophysicist, maker, and mother. Brighton Esports is now in its sixth year and has grown from seven to over 40 students. Her team has been competitive for three years and has won two of New York's League of Legends championships. Thank you for joining us, Laura. Awesome. So happy, happy to be here. Um, so for today, we're going to kind of do a panel discussion over providing opportunities for participation, and then we'll go through steps and then providing a safe and inclusive space with the steps afterwards. After that, we will open it up for Q&A. If you have questions, we might stop between each one and ask and have them answer just as it makes sense. So please feel free to throw questions in as we go. All right, so we're just going to kind of popcorn this one out. What is one experience that made you feel welcome in esports? Um, I'm going to start Sierra as our actual collegiate player. How did you get into it and how did you feel welcome? Um, I got into it on my own. I found it in our college weekly sort of newsletter that gets put out every week. And I found that they were looking for players. So I put in an interest form and I got a call back from Coach Stranahan about a week and a half later. And I that's when I started on the Valorant team. 
And the experience that has made me feel the most welcome is probably the starting night when, you know, we were all just playing for fun and just getting to know each other before we even knew we were going to be on a team. And at the end of the night, our coach, David, looked at us and he said, you know, you guys work so well together and you guys just have great synergy and, you know, you guys are going to start this season. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to skip to Laura. Laura, how did you get into esports and what made you feel welcome? Um, I played it as a way to connect with my friends who had gone to different colleges when I was in college. So I played uh, Defense of the Ancients, the, the game that League of Legends was based on. Um, and just having people I know, um, finding a hero or champion that I really liked, um, and using voice chat to just connect with people uh, who were far away that I wanted to keep in touch with. Awesome. Thank you. And then Michelle, what about you? So um, I actually got involved in esports because I was playing a lot of Animal Crossing and I wanted to be involved in my district's Nintendo club. Unfortunately, this year due to COVID, um, a lot of the clubs kind of fell at the wayside. Um, so we didn't have Nintendo club, but um, our esports coach from last year actually ended up going to Hudson Valley and a Sierra's coach, Bob Stranahan. So they needed another coach to step in. Um, so one of the administrators at my school knew I was interested in helping with Nintendo club and asked if I would coach the esports team. Um, I really felt welcome after meeting with the captains for the first time and listening to them and, and their passion and seeing that they trusted me, but that I trusted them back. And I think that was the, the first time I felt like I was part of something bigger. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so I kind of broaden this up to more than just coaches because we do sometimes have collegiate players hop in and they're the leaders at their school. So what are some practical steps that the coaches or the team leaders can take to make their programs more inviting to the women and girls? I'm gonna start off with Laura. Yeah, I think having a presence at the club fair at our school was a big way to just kind of get our faces out there. Um, one of, so my esports club was founded by um, two female students and one of them really liked to draw. And so she drew a bunch of the League of Legends champions on like a poster that we had up at the club event. And I think just making yourself, um, making yourself known and putting yourself out there as a club so people know, because sometimes we have students who are just playing games at home and they don't know that um, people are playing together at school. So I think that was really helpful. We also had club meetings where we didn't just play esports, <laughs> um, though most of our meetings now we play, um, but we would play this game of Pictionary with the League of Legends champions. So they would pull champions out of a kind of bucket with the champions names on them. And then they would draw, they really like to draw on the chalkboard in my classroom. Um, and I think it helped people learn all the champions and discuss the changes that happen between patches um, of the different champions. Awesome, thank you so much. So I'm gonna just like recap cause I can't help it. I have the teacher background. So um, so I'm hearing like a lot of adding in some more like discussion and activities a lot that go along with the game. So not just being always focused on the specific games that you're always playing, but kind of bringing in more of the, uh, like the community sense of it and having them feel more of a community. And then also having the girls that are interested participate in ways to be um, kind of seen and, and show off that they are part of that group. Yeah, I think those are good inclusive practices. Yeah, thank you. Um, Michelle, how about you? So I think one of the biggest things, and Laura kind of just touched on this too, is to just be visible within your district and make sure people know who you are. 
that's been a bit of a challenge for me because I work typically at the elementary level, not as much at the high school and with being hybrid and virtual, this year's been a little crazy. Um, but even kind of linking with your school announcements, whether it's just a verbal announcement or if you have video, we're lucky enough to have video. Um, so we made um, a video for the beginning of the season. So everyone in the school knew that the coach was female. Um, so I was hopeful that more female students would get involved and just have events. I'll talk more about that later, um, but kind of work with other people in your school community, but also outside your school community. Um, to make something happen. So girls know they're not alone, um, that there are other girls playing. Um, if they know there's other players out there, I'm um, kind of like Laura said, instead of just sitting and playing alone at home, they'll be more apt to come in and, and get involved with their school's teams. Awesome, thank you. Uh, it reminds me of kind of, if you don't have a bunch of like girls that are willing to come in, uh, connecting with other coaches that maybe have them and maybe partner up with them, giving that visibility of and comfortable, like, hey, we do have girls, maybe not specifically at our school, and then using, you know, whether it's a blog that we've posted on Play Versus or seeing um, women actually playing, and Sierra will we'll hop to you too, is about this. But it, it's just providing that visibility that this is something that they can do and are welcome to do. Okay, Sierra, I would love to hear that player perspective. How can we as coaches, as team leaders, make those girls want to come in? Um, well, I know that from like Hudson Valley and what we do, we do a lot of like, we try to get ourselves out there and we try to broadcast ourselves. So we have our Twitch and everything else and I know um we've been trying to do player highlights and you know show off everybody not even just the girls because I know I'm one of the few girls at Hudson Valley on their esports but we try to get everybody involved um I know when you'd first join the discord everybody welcomes you and tries to make you feel welcomed and even if we're in the middle of a season you can still join in and play with us like I actually have a few players um, who aren't on my Overwatch team. They're not a sub. They're planning on joining next year, but I still get them in and I still play with them. And they're just lovely two girls that are waiting to be on my team. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. So again, I'm kind of hearing the same lines of like building the community, making them feel welcome, whether they happen in the middle of the season or they're wanting to just kind of get their toes wet with the, the group. Um, thank you so much. Anybody else have some last minute thoughts before we move on to our next steps? Anybody in the chat that want to ask us a question? Cool. I don't want to like rush on, give everyone time. Okay. So, um, some recommendations. I'll give Michelle a moment. I'm going to read through these, Michelle, and then I'll let you kind of chat in more detail. But like what Michelle said, she did a girls game night, which was so fun. I got to help with it. Um, then like we said previously, like provide a variety of games. Uh, some research shows that uh, because consoles are more accessible to a lot of people outside of like the regular like gamer zone that they may be more willing to come in to play those console games. Um, it's easier to get a console, play with your buddy with a console. So it just shows that that might be something that's more welcoming. Uh, provide mentorships and then um, have empowerment and educational opportunities. I'll delve deeper in those here in a little bit, but Michelle, I'd love for you to explain your girls gaming night. Yes, it was amazing. I'll start off with that. Um, the idea kind of came to be, um, as Melanie mentioned in my intro, I grew up playing ice hockey and um, being one of the only girls and then switching to an all girls program. And when I first started coaching esports, my first thought when I saw kind of everyone rolling in was where are all the girls? I know they're there, <laughs> where are they? Um, so I reached out to some administrators. I reached out to um, Coach Stranahan from Hudson Valley, um, Matt Fisher from Sage, which is a local college that is primarily female, um, and just started networking and asking questions. What do you do? What should I do? Um, and I was actually introduced to um, one of Matt's 
previous teammates, um, who I believe is currently at South Carolina. And I met with her and she said that they have game night on campus locally. And I was like, wow, that's an amazing idea. Um, so we kind of got the ball rolling from there. I reached out to Melanie from Play Versus. I reached out to Narek and Bosies, um, which kind of oversees a lot of our techie type things in um, New York State for public schools. Um, we ended up having a all uh, female panel. So Sierra um, participated in that. That was amazing. Serena, uh, Matt's contact, she participated. And then um, another woman in the industry also participated. So it was nice we kind of had play and people on the other side too. So the girls who did attend could see kind of all aspects of the game. And when I kind of first put feelers out there, there were a couple people I work with, I won't say any names, who said to me, oh, you'll be lucky if you'll get five, five people, five or 10 people to sign up. And initially I just wanted to open it up to my district, but in thinking further, I didn't want just five people to show up or for girls to say, I don't know anyone at, at my school who plays, I'm not gonna sign up. So I think the idea of opening it up to the whole capital region um, made girls more apt to sign up to see who else is out there, maybe in a different school who's playing. And after a week, we had probably around like 30 to 40 people sign up. Um, then we had 50 and then Narek reached out to me and said, maybe we should turn off the form <laughs> because there are a lot of girls signing up. And even after I turned off the form, I had students emailing me like the forms closed. Can I still sign up? I was like, yeah, yeah, it's okay. Here's the link. Um, but I think the best part was, well, there are a few things. I think it was wonderful that the girls got to see such great role models who are into, who are, playing collegiately or who are in the industry in other ways and listen to them and ask them questions and, and see that there is a future for them in esports, but also after to go into breakout rooms and meet other girls in the area who are playing, exchange gamer tags and discords, talk about what games they like. I know Sierra was in one of the breakout rooms. It was amazing. It was like the cutest thing I've ever seen. Um, so I was, I was really happy um, with how it came out and how everyone kind of came together to make it happen. Thank you for sharing. And if you're listening and you're interested in doing something that, like that, if you're part of Play Versus, you should have access to me to email me and we'll try to work something out. Um, so yeah, again, it goes back to just that visibility, having connections, building that community where they feel comfortable. Um, so to go into the mentorship, this is where I'm going to put in a plug because I can't help myself. We just opened up a, a mentorship opportunity for the girls of Play Versus, our game changers who are women in the industry are willing to do some mentor mentorship. So I will put the form in the chat if you have any, and it's open up to um, women and girls and um anybody of the marginalized genders, uh, non-binary agenders. So if you have somebody that is interested, uh, they can fill it out and we will work on getting them connected with somebody in the gaming industry. It goes back to just having somebody to talk to, see that there are other people out there. Um, and then empowerment and educational opportunities. I think these are very important. Um, one, if you have a girl who is doing just a fabulous job. Again, let Play Versus know, and we'd love to highlight them and put them up on our socials so that other girls can see what they're doing and that there are other people there. And then having opportunities just to learn more about the industry and about gaming. And again, just see people there. Um, anything that Laura, Sierra, you would like to add to some recommendations? Um, so chugging along, we've got kind of making this inclusive and safe. So what are some steps? Um, oh, I, I typoed, sorry. What are steps that a team leader or coach can take in order to start creating that safe space for players? Um, Michelle, I'm gonna hop it out to you now. Um, I think the most important thing for me to kind of make sure the players are respecting each other is to really be involved in the discord. Um, being virtual and playing um, 
virtually this season with um, the pandemic, that's the best way for me to get to know them and for me to monitor what they're talking about to make sure everything's appropriate, to make sure there's no bullying, everyone's being included and treating each other with respect. Um, so that's been um, the biggest thing for me this year is just kind of keeping an eye on everything all the time. Sometimes they forget I'm in the chat, <laughs> which is funny. They might not be doing any bullying, but might say inappropriate things. I'm like, hi, I'm still here. Um, so I would say that, and also having a statement in your Discord, like an automated message when you join um, with kind of a no tolerance policy. So students know when they join, this is the deal. These are the rules you need to follow. We will respect each other. And also to pick leaders with in your program who also have the same standards that you do, who you know when you're not able to be there, um, that they'll make sure those things are followed and that people are treated with respect. Awesome, thank you. Um, and if you're watching, I'm trying to take notes. I'll try to also share the notes out with you all at the end. Laura, how, how do you think we can create a safe space? Yeah, I have my students sign a um, like agreement, like a student athlete signs that kind of all school rules still apply. Um, and it, I think that also just establishes like this is a serious place and we're doing serious things here. Um, and you're representing our district and I and that my students take that really seriously that they're representing um, the district. So I think Michelle did a nice job capturing uh, a lot of the steps with um, setting up the Discord to be a space um, for students to talk to each other. A lot of students are more comfortable talking through Discord, I think. Um, it's just kind of the way things are. Um, and making sure you're involved in that um, and, and that you, you care about them and you want to have fun and you are supporting them. Um, I think that's inclusive of all genders really um, that you are their champion. Like you're there to um, give them the opportunity to represent their district and with their talents, which I think is really cool. Awesome, I love that. Like you are their champion. You are there to support them and their talents. Oh, I feel so empowered from that. Thank you. And then Sierra, how about as a player? What are you, what's your take? Um, I know that as a, just a captain of my team, I try to get to know my players before the semester and before even the season. Like we started probably a week or two before the semester even started. So it was nothing serious, just all practices and everything, but I know with all my players, I DM them. I make sure they're doing okay every once in a while because, you know, you can have all these things and have them sign, but in the end, you know, they're gonna tell you if they feel uncomfortable if they're comfortable with you. Just like if it, just like if you were in school, you know, if you send them to the office, they may not be comfortable telling somebody like that. But I know, you know, as both the previous ladies said everybody feels a lot more comfortable in the online discord setting because it's you at home, you know, in your comfy clothes, you know, being yourself and you're able to do that without anybody saying anything to you. And also there's always a mute button and a block button. If anybody gets too nasty without, you know, being able to talk to somebody first. Awesome, thank you. So how can these leaders and these coaches take this in, into account when they're building their team and program structure? Um, Laura, I'd love to hear from you about this. Um, I really like what Sierra said about um, building relationships with students. I think that's what started the program in the first place. I had shared with a student that I played um, Dota, which is similar to League of Legends. And he's like, oh, you do? I'm gonna tell my friends. And they came to me to start that program. Um, so relationships are the biggest thing. Um, I think Michelle spoke to structuring um, safe spaces in the Discord. So maybe she can um, talk to that more. Yeah, thank you, Michelle, love to hear. 
Yeah, um, like I said before about Discord, um, having a certain role within the Discord itself, you can see everything and monitor everything. Uh, but even being part of chats within the team, um, I had one team that I had to mute over break and in between seasons because they're constantly playing and talking to each other. Um, but being in those groups too, and being in on the calls and listening to how people are communicating with each other, once again, especially being apart from each other now, that's been really hard. And forming relationships, um, like Lauren Sierra said, is so important, but also challenging currently. It's been a challenge for me this year being at the elementary level and with hybrid. Um, so whether it's checking in through the Discord often with the whole team as a group, and also um, every once in a while on Google Meet because I want them to see my face so they know what I look like and to say hi to me in school and things like that, um, I think is, is really important. Whether they wanna show their face or not, they're not required to do that, um, but just so they know they have a friendly face and to get to know me better. So they do feel more comfortable sharing when they have concerns that I might not be aware of. Awesome, thank you. And if you're like hesitant about Discord and team communication tools, we did do a coach chat previously. So I've popped that in the chat if you are wanting to learn more about how to set up a Discord. Um, and then Sierra, what, are, what do you think? Um, I think both the ladies are very correct. You know, it's all about building relationships and listening in. I can give you examples. Um, every time I have a practice, Bob or Mr. Shanahan is always sitting on my practice or his um, fellow coach that he has hired, David Zivitoff, you know, he'll sit in and he'll even play with us sometimes and give us some insights. So there's always somebody monitoring us, even if they're not talking. Um, like Bob, he doesn't often like talk with us, but sometimes he'll sit in, he'll listen to us, make sure, you know, we're doing everything that we're supposed to, talking nicely. And, you know, it's all about just communication and, you know, sticking together and, you know, not being rude. <laughs> Awesome. I feel like we kind of addressed this, but how do we ensure that safe communication and interaction between players? And so now I'm thinking like, okay, something happened. What do we do now? Or is there a way to prevent it? Um, uh, Sierra, what, what do you think about that? You kind of were addressing it. So let's say something happened. You use that mute button. Now what? Um, after you use the button on somebody that you don't like, obviously like a um, coach or you know, you team captain, you talk to them about it. And I, one of my players came to me and was like, you know, hey, X, Y, Z, you know, said this to me in game. It made me feel uncomfortable. You know, I would go to Bob about it if they weren't comfortable about doing it themselves. Or, you know, it's all about even taking things in your own hands. As a captain, I have the power to bench players if they're being disrespectful. So sometimes, you know, taking it into your own hands with a, like, um, with almost like a layer. Cause there's only so much that I can do, but it's also just helpful to know, you know, hey, I have your back. Awesome, thank you. Um, Michelle, what do you think? How can we ensure safe communication and interaction between the players? I think there's a couple ways to do that. And I really like that Laura has her players sign an agreement at the beginning of the season um, to hold everyone accountable. I think that's a great idea. And also making sure that students understand that there are consequences for their actions. If you don't tell them before and then something happens and there's a consequence, then they're gonna be upset. There's a break in trust. But if students understand before, listen, if this happens, this is the consequence for something even like grades um, I think that they will work harder to make sure in this example that they are communicating appropriately, that they are being respectful, but if they're not, they'll have an understanding of, okay, I did, this was incorrect, this was inappropriate, this is why this is happening um, to me. Um, but in addition, just going back to picking your captains and the leaders of your team, I think that's really important. And kind of what Sierra said, coaches are always listening. Um, I'm thinking mm -hmm. back to a match from last season in my League of Legends team, I could start to hear them arguing 
um, on the voice chat. And I was getting ready to step in and our captain just kind of talked the person down very calmly and the issue was squashed and they talked about it as a team after. Um, so always have a bird's eye view, but if the captains are able to handle it and they're able to work it out as a team, I think that really fosters that sense of community even more. Um, and it's something really great to see and it, it will help them in life too, as they move forward. Yeah, that's a great skill to learn. Thank you. And then Laura, do you have anything you'd like to add? I definitely think choosing the right captains is a good <laughs> option. Um, and it, touching base with players about kind of their um, hopes and fears, especially sometimes um, as the season progresses. And if like my, my students did really well and they uh, were New York State champions for two seasons, then last season they came in second place. Um, and sometimes tensions get high when the competition gets high. Um, and so having when we were in person, I know it's harder now, um, I had students go around and share like a hope and a fear. Um, and just, you have to have a, a certain community in order to do something like that. But if you can do that, that can open up um, people understanding um, where each of the players is coming from um, and create a greater sense of community within the team. Awesome. So now I have a follow-up question. Okay. <laughs> when, and Michelle, you can hop in as well. Um, when picking team captains, like how do you determine you're like, this person's new, they're just meeting the players. Like how do you determine as a coach, a good team captain? What are you looking for? I've had some experience and have had, uh, team captains that didn't create the environment that I kind of thought would be the best. And so um, I think I also have students vote and that can get dicey because um, it could be like a popularity contest, um, but we do have a vote. And then I have a much closer relationship with the team captain. Um, and we debrief often after games as well, like what went well, what didn't go well, um, so voting can sometimes do it, um, because collectively the team has decided that this is their leader and that, um, creates a unified front. Thanks. Michelle, do you have any other suggestions? Yeah. Um, since I was new last season and didn't have a ton of game knowledge even, it was very hard for me. Um, so I relied on my colleagues who were involved previously and spoke with them about the character of the students um, who were signing up. And um, after meeting with the students and just getting to see their personalities, how they communicate with each other, react with each other, uh, it might sound silly, but also looking at their grades on school tool. Um, not necessarily do they have straight A's, but looking at the teacher's comments, are they responsible? Um, will they be a good leader in the academic, um, in academics as well? Um, and set a standard there for students, because if we have students failing classes, they're not allowed to play or they need to stay for study hall. Uh, so really just using your resources. And then this season we had um, some new players come in on our Rocket League regional team. So I had a Rocket League captain for the state team help me choose a captain for the regional team um, because he really got to know them better during tryouts and things. So use your resources if you're unsure. And I also like Laura's idea of voting because a lot of these students are playing together all the time outside of school and they're gonna vote for someone that they respect and that they, that they think will actually lead them and do a good job. Awesome, thank you so much. And thanks for the follow-up on that. Um, I would be afraid of picking somebody who wasn't a, a, a good leader. Laura, did you remove them if they weren't being a good team captain? They graduated. <laughs> <laughs> Easy out. Easy <laughs> out. Michelle, do you want to add? Yeah, I 
last season, I picked a captain who was probably not the best choice, um, which I learned quickly. And he wasn't removed um, due to some grades and absences. He wasn't able to play. And we had some subs on the team and some leaders emerged anyways. And they kind of came together as a team in general. It was a Rocket League team. So there was only three players. Uh, and then this season, they are no longer um, no longer playing, I think, because of our some of our stricter policies, but, but it is, it is hard, but you learn very quickly and natural leaders will emerge. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so some information that we kind of listed out, uh, I just wanna, can I yeah. add one thing? Sorry. Leadership is hard and it's a learning experience. Um, and sometimes it's also good to have like a, a co-captain or a, we have president and like vice president. Um, and so if they're, if the dynamic isn't working, then you can have another person to help out. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. I've heard of um, like almost student council for your program, especially if you're a bigger program and having uh, lots of different ways for kids to be leadership or in leadership. And so it gives that fluidity if you need it. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so this is some information I gathered from, we had a game changer conversation. Uh, I also linked that in the chat about creating inclusive and safe spaces. And so these are some learnings that I pulled from it that I would not have really paid attention to and thought of, but having a place for anonymous feedback and reporting, as much as you want to be there for your players, there may be a player or two that feels uncomfortable sharing about um, how they're feeling about another player um, or how they feel about the other, um, like the community as a whole. So having a place for that feedback and so you can at least see it and address it as needed. Um, this can be, they talked about using Discord for this, but whatever your school or your program uses, just have a spot for that anonymous feedback. And then this kind of got brought up, but not, um, I think Sierra kind of brought it up with like benching people, but I have a pretty, and I think Michelle brought it up with like having your rules and your guidelines out beforehand and having those conversations, but then have a pretty strict no tolerance policy when it comes to, um, you know, making comments about other players. You might need to have some leniency um, in other ways, but if it comes down to um, sexism, ableism, any homophobia, you know, racism, like it's okay to just bench them for a game or do whatever is the proper policy for your community. But um, just be honest and upfront about it, how you feel about it, and then you know, actually follow through. And then um, another one is to have visibility of women coaches. If you don't have a woman as a coach, then kind of see if anybody's willing to just kind of hang out and be there and learn about the game. So reach out to your fellow staff and faculty members, see if, even if they don't wanna be there for like the specific games. Um, just having someone there. And then um, it was mentioned before with uh, Michelle and Laura, like just being seen and have your face out there so that they can, so they can see who you are and feel welcome in that way. Um, any thoughts to add to that list? Okay. No. Okay. Uh, and then I linked here, I also put it in the chat. Um, we had a guest from Games Hotline come on and talk about non judgmental active listening. I learned so much. It was amazing. Um, Jay talked about how to be a good listener and what to do afterwards and how to interact without sounding condescending and building that trust with your players. Um, if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend it. Um, and then creating an inclusive and safe space. That's the one I mentioned with our game changers. So uh, we had some amazing women from the gaming industry talk about, they were looking more at collegiate, but you could use this with your high school programs as well. And just creating that safe space, um, both in game, but also in your discord. Again, they were specifically talking about discord, but how you can do that. Awesome. Enough of me talking. Anybody have any questions in the chat for our panel? No? 
okay. Quiet group this time. So I'll just move on. Um, so we do have some coach chats coming up that kind of go along with this. It's building that team mentality. So we have a super coach coming on and talking about how he builds that team mentality. And then we'll talk about scouting on play versus. And then um, we have our community stream night. We think we'll be doing League of Legends this week. It got changed today. So hopefully we get that ironed out. Um, oh, we have a question. Yay. So uh, would love to know if any if there's anything specific for GA games. Okay, thank you. So any games that drew the girls in? So did you all see any trends with specific games? So when I um, put out the Google form for girls gaming night, I had a list of um, different games and then had students also put in other and the most popular game that would have would be approved um, at our district was Overwatch. Um, a lot of females seem to gravitate to Overwatch and we're hoping to add that actually um, to our program for the fall season. But that was one that really stood out to me that Play Versus offers. Awesome. Laura, Sierra, do you want to add? I'm gonna have to agree with Overwatch. I mean, I. I Overwatch team captain and even before that you know I was I even signed up for it when we didn't have it as a game like it was still offered but we didn't have enough people for it and I know there's two girls who are waiting patiently in our discord for it to be able to play next semester. Um, Laura do you want to add any games that you noticed? We have primarily been playing League of Legends and we've had female players play League of Legends um, in all the new games. We haven't had any female players, but League of Legends, I think there's a lot of opportunity for um, cooperation with other players and a lot of champions that people like. <laughs> yep, for sure. Um, and kind of like what I stated before, there is some research behind like console games. So if they can you know, have access to it outside of the PC seems to be welcoming. Uh, I don't know the exact science behind it, but I thought that was interesting that you see more women and girls playing console games. Uh, the little bit I did hear and read was about how it is just more accessible because you can share console. Um, you can go pre-COVID, you could go to your friend's house and play and learn how to play. You didn't have to have this uh, a little more costly PC. But honestly, when it comes to it, I think just getting out there and asking your community and trying to figure out what your school or your program can one host, but then two, what are they interested in? It seems like every school is different and it's hard to nail it like, yep, this game is that magic game for the girls. Um, Great question though, I, I appreciate you asking. Any other questions? Awesome. Well, that's it. If we don't have any other questions, we all get to go home early and you know put our feet up and have a good break. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, I can stay on for a little bit if you have any questions that come up. Um, if you are looking to do any of these um, suggestions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I don't mind supporting events. I have less experience with like match day stuff. So don't reach out to me about match questions. But if you have an event question or a community question, please reach out to me. I will put it in the chat. I'm melanie at playvs.com. Um, you can also find me in our discord a lot of times. Um, and then our super coaches are also available if you want to hop and ask them a question. We have some wonderful women in our space. We also have some um, super coaches that have girls in their programs. So you feel free to ask them questions as you see them. So again, Michelle, Laura, Sierra, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Have a good evening. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye everyone.